Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, Father, be that exalted. Lord, we come before you tonight. Seek for help. Seek for wisdom. Seek for direction. Seek for more strength. Seek for impartation. Holy Spirit, open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding, O oh God. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. Lord, we ask for the spirit of focus tonight. Is there any way we are sinned against you, Lord? Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, I want us to be very... I want us to pray for like a minute. Please, I encourage everyone. I encourage everyone to please pray intentionally. I've been, I'm not, I shouldn't be saying this. I've been trying to prepare for tonight's meeting for almost two hours now. And since I came back from work, you know, all I've been just trying to get things ready. And for some reason, this page just showed me something just four minutes ago, just about, I think it was 901 or 902. And <clears throat> it really, really, I need, I need to ask more questions after this meeting because I felt like God is pointing to something that is about to happen. You know, we're going to read it, you know, but I just feel like God is saying something very big. You know, please, I want us to pray. I'm going to ask us to pray for a minute. Lord, open my eyes of understanding. Open my eyes of understanding. Open my eyes of understanding. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, Lord, open my eyes of understanding. 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 Lord, open my eyes of understanding. 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 Open, oh God. Open, oh God. Open, oh God. Open my eyes of understanding. My eyes of understanding. My eyes of understanding. My eyes of understanding, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes of understanding, my eyes of understanding. Open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes of understanding. Open, oh God, Holy Spirit, open, 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 open my eyes of understanding, 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 open my eyes of understanding. 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 Open, Lord. Open, Lord. Open, Lord. Open Lord, open Lord, open Lord, open Lord, open Lord, open my eyes of understanding. Open, oh God, open, oh God, open my eyes, 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 open my open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes of understanding. Open, oh God, open, oh God, open, 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 open my eyes of understanding open lord open lord open 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 in jesus name we pray amen and secondly it's going to be our last prayer for now then towards the tail end we begin to pray again please i'm going to say once again please i don't really want you to follow me Tonight, even though your body might be tired, probably due to a long day, but please, I really want your spirit to be really connected with me tonight. I want us to pray this prayer and tell the Lord, Lord, grant me access to understanding. Give me access to the understanding of your word tonight. Prayer in the name of Jesus. 
my Lord and my God. Grant me access to understanding. Grant me access to understanding. Grant me access. Access to understanding. Grant me access to understanding. Understanding of your word. Grant me access. Access, 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 access to understanding, access to understanding, access to understanding. Grant me access, 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 access to understanding, to understanding, to understanding. Grant me access, grant me access, grant me access, grant me access, grant me access to understanding. Grant me access, grant me access, grant me access, grant me access. Grant me access, grant me access, grant me access, grant me access to understanding, to understanding, to understanding. Grant me access, grant me access, grant me access, grant me access to understanding. Grant me access, grant me access, grant me access. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I say thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. I believe everyone had a very productive day and a peaceful one. One things are one of the things I look forward on every day, every week is peace, peace of mind, peace of mind, peace, and a very productive day. So our tonight's topic is faith for the end time battle. Faith or the necessity of faith for this end time journey the necessity of faith for the end time journey the necessity of faith for the end time journey so we're going to quickly define what is faith let's quickly look at the book of hebrew chapter 1 hebrew chapter 11 verse verses 1 hebrew chapter 11 verses 1 hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 It says, <clears throat> Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, meaning that faith, one of the definitions I have here is faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. You are so assured within your spirit. You are so confident in your spirit that this thing that you hope for, it definitely exists, yet you can't see it. The same way you and I believe that there, there is intense time, there's more intense time, there's large intense time. There is a diaphragm at the middle here you believe there is lungs, even though you cannot see it. But you so much believe that there are veins running through your body. There are nerves. There are cells. Brethren, we are in the dispensation. And from the things, there was something the Spirit showed me, which we're going to go into. And I... I'm going to perceive that we are about to enter into another dispensation in year 2024. From what Holy Spirit just it was like a whisper. I saw it and I was like, oh my God. I was, I was studying by myself just a few minutes ago. And all I kept saying was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, God speaks to me in different ways, but when God is speaking to my man and it's very, very heavy and it's kind of shocking, those are the words that come out of my mouth. Oh my God, oh my God. 
Brethren, please, I encourage you. You are not perfect. I'm not perfect. Take your work with God very serious. I don't know what's about to happen in year 2024, but please, I'm begging you. What I saw tonight, I know some of you will be wondering, why is Brother Tyro keep emphasizing what he saw, what he saw? I, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit that it will open your eyes to see what he showed me tonight. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. We are about to enter a new dispensation of faith. You know, please, I encourage you. If you have anyone in your life, either male or female, who is trying to pull you back from working with the Lord, please disconnect from them. Please, I beg you. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So meaning the same love you have for you, for yourself, you give the same love to your neighbor. It doesn't say love your neighbor more than you love yourself. Let me repeat that again. The Bible didn't say love your neighbor more than you love yourself. Love yourself first. The same love you have for yourself that you give to your neighbor. Meaning, if you love yourself enough, preserve your life, preserve your soul. Make a decision to preserve your soul. Make a decision to preserve, protect your relationship with God. Be willing to disconnect. Love protects. What is faith? Faith is having confidence and assurance in what we cannot see. You are so confident, so confident and assured that this thing exists. Just like me and you now, someone will ask you, are you so sure that God exists? Are you so sure that heaven and hell exist? That is what we call faith. You have that confidence that you will make heaven. You have that confidence that God exists. You have that confidence the rapture that Jesus is coming again. You have not seen the rapture. You have not seen Jesus face to face, but you so much believe. And you see, it's just like the same faith. You have so much faith in tomorrow, and that is why you have planned for tomorrow. Faith means believe. You have not seen tomorrow yet. You have no idea what will happen tomorrow yet. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. No matter what you are going through, please, I'm begging you, I'm urging you, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. If you don't believe in tomorrow, you won't prepare for tomorrow. Some of you already have plans, the things you want to do this week. You already have plans, the things you want to do tomorrow. That is faith. What is faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen, yet you so much believe they exist. You so much believe they exist. What is faith? Faith means to be certain about something, yet you can't see it. Brethren, you see, when you receive Christ, the Bible says the salvation that we have received was a gift through faith. Even the salvation we receive, it came as a gift through faith. But you see, faith is in levels. Faith, I'll say that again, faith is in levels. The Bible says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, ye can say to this mountain, be out of this yonder, However, I'm trying to make us understand, brethren, that please, I'm begging you, faith has levels. Big dreams will require big faith. That's why, you see, when you say big faith, it means 
a, 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 you have to take another high risk. High risk. It's like you trust in, let's say you run a business of $5,000. And now God says, yeah, 2024, I want to move you to $5 million. And there are steps you have to take. That is a high level of faith. Look at the gap from $5,000 business, the startup business, to a transition of $5 million. You will need a higher level of faith. Let's now see the reason why we need to contend for this faith. Why we really need to go for this faith. Why it is very important to take this faith very, in, very serious. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22. This is where part of my message is. Luke 22. From verse 31. Luke 22 from verse 31. I read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may seat you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen thy brethren. Brethren, God, Jesus, had to pray intensely. Had to pray for the faith, for the faith of Peter not to fail. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at how Jesus end, ended that verse. He says, when you are converted, when you have been restored and redeemed, strengthen thy what? Thy brethren, meaning we are in the end time when the enemy will come for your faith. And it's not coming for your faith because of you. It's coming for your faith because of your brethren. There are many you have not met whose faith are connected to your faith. There are many I have not seen whose faith and their lifting is connected to my faith. Why would Jesus tell Peter that Peter, when you are redeemed, when your faith is back up rising, when your faith is back up in charge, strengthen them. Because once you go down, they go down. You remember when Peter, after Jesus Christ, rose back again? When they, when they went fishing, what happened? They followed Peter in fishing. When Peter went back to fishing, what he has dropped before, when he went back, the brethren went back with him. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you in the name of God of heaven. Please take your faith very serious. Please take your faith very serious. This walk of faith Take it very, very serious. It's a daily walk of faith. Brethren, ah, oh my God. I saw some things today. It's a daily, this journey, this journey called salvation is a walk of faith. W-A-L-K. A daily walk is a day. Every day you wake up to, to, to go on a journey of faith. Meaning, you must be willing to make an intentional decision.
to stay in faith daily. To take actions of faith daily. Oh my God. Let's read further. Verse 33 says, we saw in verse 32 that Jesus asked, Jesus prayed for Peter. That is faith. And guess what? That prayer was sent into the future for Peter. It wasn't now. Brethren, Pray, pray, pray. I said some things on Tuesday. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I'm not the only one that sees revelation. I'm sure some of you, you know, who has the gift, you see dreams, Holy Spirit reveal things to you in your dream, or he speak to you about things to come. Brethren, please prepare for year 2024. Even the end of this year, prepare. 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 I'm begging you, prepare. Prepare. Take this. Take the walk. Look at how Jesus sent, he sent prayer to preserve Peter that his faith will not fail. He was able to send prayer into his future. Let's read for that. Verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with, to, to go with thee Put into prison and to death. Did you hear that? That was Peter making his confession. In my opinion, Peter was being sincere. Peter was being genuine. The same way many of us are sincere and genuine. That God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Lord, I love you. But brethren, you have no idea. You have no idea your stature spiritually. You have no idea what you will do when fire begins to burn. You have no idea what, we, what you will say, what your actions will be when your challenges arises or when you have been tested. Follow me. Verse 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without pause and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Verse 36. Then said he unto them, But now, he, he that had a pause, this is where the Lord began to press on my heart. The, the message that the Lord gave me for this season we are about to enter, this is where the message is. I didn't know this message was going to come in my preparation. My preparation was to prepare for the message of faith for the end time. But when the Lord began to speak to me, please follow me from here. Verse 35, and he said unto them, we are reading Luke 22, verse 35 now. And he said unto them, when I sent you without pause and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Verse 36, then said he unto them, but now he that hath a pause, let him take it. And likewise, is creep, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. Ah, he that has no sword, let him sell his garments and buy. You see, when I go to this place, I've believe me, I've read this place before. I have read this place before. What does sword have to do with faith? I know the way God speaks to me. What does sword have to do with the topic of faith? Follow me. And look at what the Holy Spirit said. Verse 37. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And 
he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. Verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, there are two swords. And he said unto them, it is not enough. Ah, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The swords, they said the word, they have two swords. Saying the swords, the same. Oh my God. You remember when Jesus was being arrested? When Peter cut off the ear of one of the servants that came to arrest Jesus, what did he tell him? He said, Keep this word. Keep this word. But now he's telling them, sending a message. Brethren said this. They even told him, telling Jesus, We have two swords. Saying, the sword you have is not enough because what is coming, this word, according to what the Lord was telling me. Remember, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 4 12, it says, The word of the Lord is quick and powerful. Sharper. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful. Sharper than two edges sword. The Lord was telling me. He was telling them that the sword, go and sell your garment and buy a sword. Oh my God. Brethren, this sword is telling you and I, the word of God in you is not enough. There is something coming. Go and buy. Buy more word. Buy. Prepare. Prepare. Load your hearts with the word because something heavy is coming. Something big is coming. Load, load, load your heart with the word of God. Prepare your heart. They told him, Lord, we have two swords. No, what you have is not enough. By what I see, what you have is not enough. It can undo what is ahead of you. Let's move further. Now, look at the step Jesus Christ now took. Verse 36, verse 39. And he went to get Simone. And he came out and went as he, as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and kneeled down and prayed. He told them, the same man who prayed for Peter, now is speaking directly to Peter, telling them, he said, pray, pray, pray. Pray. Oh, oh my God. He already prayed for Peter. The same way you and I go to church on Sunday. The pastor has prayed. But yet, the Holy Spirit is telling you while you are driving home. Pray that you fall not into... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brethren, we have passed the season. We have passed the age where we depend on our general overseers. It is time for all man to wear his garment of war. It is time for all man to rise up and take their baton. My pastor, my pastor, my pastor will pray for me. My pastor is always available at midnight. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with that. But we must grow. We must grow from disturbing the pastor with text messages, with prayer every midnight to the point where you rise up. Where you rise up. Look at what Jesus Christ did. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone cast and kneeled down and he prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, 
strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed what? More earnestly. He prayed the angel strengthened <clears throat> the angel strengthening and he prayed more. Brethren, oh my God. Oh my God. No wonder his faith never failed. This man prayed. He prayed to the point until his faith could be sustained to go on that journey. He saw the cross. Oh my, the same Jesus that prayed for Peter. He saw his own assignment. The Bible says he separated himself. He separated himself and he prayed. After the first, the first layer of prayer, then the angel came. The angel now gave him strength to do what? To pray. You see, when the Bible says he prayed earnestly, meaning this kind of prayer, he prayed the second prayer. By the reason of the strength the angel brought to him, the prayer become more aggressive than the previous prayer. Why? To sustain his faith. To sustain his faith. The same strategy he did for Peter, he applied the same strategy for himself. He said, Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail a lot, that your faith fail not. And even me, Jesus, if my faith will not fail, must pray. If my faith will not disappoint you, my disciples, I must pray. The Bible says he pulled, he separated himself. Brethren, I'm begging you. Separate yourself. Make up time to pray. Separate yourself to pray. If you don't want, if you want your soul, your faith to be preserved, please separate yourself. Because brethren, ah, oh my God, I'm begging you in the name of God. I'm begging you in the name of God. I'm begging you in the name of God. I don't know what is coming. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a prophet of doom. I don't put fear in people. But you see, as children of God, we must prepare each other. Jesus prepared Peter. He told him, he said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail it not. At a point, he told Peter, he said, when you are old, do we want to go some places? You won't be able to go. Brethren, Jesus never healed. He never withhold the truth from his disciples. Let's read further. Verse 43 now. Verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed even more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples he found them sleeping sleeping for what sorrow follow me verse 46 and said unto them why sleep ye ah ah oh my god <laughs> oh my god may i not sleep in the day ah oh my god the sons of Issachar, the so oh my God, the sons of Issachar, they understood time and season. Oh my God, Lord, don't let me sleep the day when the enemy is about to break in. The enemy is about to break in. They were sleeping. Jesus understood this time and season. He knew that if I sleep, I will fail. If I sleep, because Jesus knew that the season he is now, the season he needed to pray. Is a season in it there to pray. Look at what he told them. Huh? They were sleeping. They were sleeping when they were supposed to be praying. Huh? Oh my God. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. That Lord, every spiritual slumber, brethren, please, I beg you. I'm begging you in the name of God. In the name of God. In, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of God of heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, I know all of us are very super busy. Super busy. But please, I beg you. I beg in the name of God. I beg in the name of God. Please separate yourself every day. If you have a weekend, if your Monday to Friday is extremely very busy, 
separate at least two, three hours on a Saturday, please, to seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. Don't see the way American system is being, especially if you're kind of person who is who is who is who is who is, who is ambitious driven. You are you are a kind of person who desire greatness. Brethren, if you don't strike balance on your life, I'm telling you, ambition, ambition will take Jesus away. You will think you are still standing. The Bible says, let him that think he stand, take heed, lest he fall. The, he thinks he was still standing. She thinks he's still standing until the enemy showed up. The same thing happened to Samson. Samson says, let me shake myself like the other day. And while Samson tried to, the air was gone. There was no more strength. The Lord has left him. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. What I just saw now again speaks to me a lot. I don't know if he's speaking to you. Jesus telling them, <laughs> oh my God, look at the question. Jesus just asked them. Verse 46. He said, and he said unto them, why sleep ye? Why sleep ye? Did you know why I brought you here? Does this place look like a, mo a motel or an hotel? Does it look like a recreation center? How? Oh. oh my God. Look at how he ended the, the statement. He says, rise. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He it, it started with a question. Why sleep ye? Ha! Huh? Why he looked at them and all he could see was he, he pitied them. Why? Ah, can you see what is coming? You are sleeping. Rise up, rise up and pray. That was an instruction. Rise up and pray. Oh my God. Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, let every spirit of slumber. Every, oh my God. Every spirit of spiritual slumber. Every spirit that has put my spirit to sleep, weakening my prayer life, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. Prayer, prayer, prayer. In the name of Jesus, every fire, every power, every power programmed to terminate my prayer life, programmed to, to, to terminate, to put my prayer life to sleep, be arrested, be terminated, 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 Determinated, 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 determinated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray that prayer again. I want us to tell the Lord every arrow of spiritual slumber, every power of spiritual slumber. The Bible says in Matthew 15, verse 13, it says, every tree my father has not planted, it shall be rooted out. I want us to tell the Lord, every arrow of spiritual slumber fired against my star, fired against my study life. You, you know that you, don't, you can't open the Bible until Sunday. Brethren, the enemy is walking. The enemy is doing something to your spirit. Please don't deny, just acknowledge it. And take action. Don't just observe. You, you find it difficult to open. How can you imagine me saying I love my wife, yet I come this home every day and I don't talk to my wife? How do you prove that you love God? How do you prove that you love God and you don't have a relationship with God? Brethren, I want us to pray that Lord, every power assigned to put me to death 
the easiest way you kill a believer, just put his prayer life to death. Once you shut down his prayer life, his faith is gone. Once his faith is gone, every other thing is gone. Every other thing is gone. I want us to pray. Every power programmed to shut me down, programmed to put me to sleep, every power programmed to, to put me to death, be terminated, be terminated, be terminated by fire, by fire in the name of Jesus. Prayer, prayer, prayer. My Father, my God, every power programmed to put me to death, be terminated, be terminated, be terminated, be terminated. Every power programmed to put my prayer life to death, programmed to put my word study life to death, be terminated, 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 be terminated. Be terminated, 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 be terminated. Vitaminated, 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 vitaminated. Every force of destruction, every forces of destruction, every pile of iniquity, every power of destruction, every pile of iniquity. Program, oh God, every spirit of diversion, every spirit of destruction, program to destroy my prayer life. You spirit of procrastination, you spirit of procrastination, you spirit of laziness, vitaminated, vitaminated, vitaminated. Vitaminated, 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 vitaminated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord. Lord, set my spirit man on fire. Set my spirit man on fire. Let my spirit man come alive. Prayer, prayer, prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, set my spirit man on fire. E rete ko bali ka kemba e remba si ko papatwa e je de ke balia me bende si ko papande araka ka pa e janda si ko papalwa e rembe su ko papana e jale ko papalia o lo set my spirit on fire set my spirit on fire set my spirit on fire you my spirit man come my life now 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 my spirit man Hear the voice of the God. Hear the voice of Lord. Mere, mere, mere. E siko babate. E rembe siko kalia. Maramba sikoma. E jende sikalia pa. Bebeli asande kebalia. Merende siko kapachwa. E rembe suko papande. A jala tikeko papa. Mereke kebali asuko. Babali asande sikapa. E jende siko kapachwa. E jende siko amara. E jende siko paramba. E sile kopali asia. Bebelu asande ko. Jede, jede, jede. Bebeli asande kopa. Babali asande kopa. Rete ke bali asuat, bambali asade eruat, bebeli asike kopa, jala de keko, e bembe suko, sile kopaliana, e sine ke balia, e sile kopalia, 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 jada ta, e parata, 
Nate, a name the Siku, the Billy Asina, a Sika Kupatua, the Padi Asinda, a Pampa Sika, a Baratua, a Kadeko, a Patua. Rate ke balia, e parasite kuba, e zida banda, e salaka kuba, e peli asina, e janda siko, ba peli asika kuba, e rate ke balia, e peli asana, e rende suko, e peli asina ka, e janda sika, e rate ke balia, e peli asina, e janda suko, e peli asia, e peli asia, e peli asia, e rate kuba. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. We're still going to continue from that chapter. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. There's a prayer I'm receiving in my spirit. My spirit man, wake up from the sleep of death. My spirit man, Wake up from this. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me read that verse again. Luke 22, verse 46. Luke 22, verse 46. He said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray. Rise and pray. Look at how he ended it. He said, lest ye enter into temptation. I want us to pray that every power program to make me sleep the sleep of death. You remember the story of Samson? Remember we had that preaching on Samson right here a couple of weeks ago. Samson Sleep, the sleep of death on the lap of Delilah. How can the locks, the locks, a man that had air that has never been touched before since the day was born? You and I can imagine. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Just try to try to imagine how long that air is going to be. Now try to imagine how do you shade that old air? And yet, that man never woke up. Hmm. Did you hear what we just told me now? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy Spirit said, Oh, my God. Holy Spirit said, How you will know that Peter, James, and John, they slept the sleep of death. He said, Jesus was praying. He's praying earnestly, earnestly. His sweat was as thick as blood. Yet yeah, they couldn't hear his voice. He prayed earnestly. If how can someone be praying aggressively? His sweat was as thick as blood. Yet they could not hear his voice. What a sleep. Brethren, I want us to pray. The Lord. Every power, my destiny, wake up from the sleep of death. My destiny, wake up. You see, when a man is sleeping in the sleep of death, that man can be, that man can be surrounded with danger, yet he won't know. You see, when a man is sleeping in the sleep of death, God will be sending many people to that person, desist from this sin. Auntie, desist from this sin. Sister, Deceased, brother, deceased from this lifetime. They won't listen. You know why? Their spirit has gone to sleep. Their spirit has gone to sleep. God will be whispering. God will be screaming. Sending signal through dreams, through people. They won't yield. Why? Their spirit has, their spirit has slept the sleep of death. Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, Every power that has put my spirit to the sleep of death, my destiny rise up from the sleep of death. My destiny, you will not go, you will not die. My destiny rise up from the sleep of death. 
my destiny, my destiny, rise up from the sleep of death. Prayer, prayer, prayer. In the name of Jesus, my destiny, rise up from the sleep of death. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up from the sleep of death. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny, let the destiny of my wife rise up from the sleep of death. Rise up from the sleep of death. Rise up from the sleep of death. Rise up now. Rise up now. Now, rise up now, rise up now, wake up from the sleep of death, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, my destiny, wake up from the sleep of death, 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 sleep of death. my destiny, wake up now, wake up now, wake up now, wake up now from the sleep of death, from the sleep of death, from the sleep of death, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up from the sleep of death. My destiny, my destiny, my spirit man, wake up now, 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 wake up now. Wake up now, wake up now, wake up now, wake up now, wake up now. In Jesus' name we pray. Imagine the example Holy Spirit just gave me now. Hmm. Holy Spirit said, David was supposed to be in battle, but his spirit has slept the sleep of death. You see, when death, when death is active, when I mean death, I'm talking about spiritual death, not physical death. Everything I've been saying is not physical death. I'm talking about spiritual death. When someone is dying spiritually, believe me, they will be walking around fire. And they won't know they are walking around fire. David was supposed to be in battle. But when the spirit, you see, when the spirit man is dead, the flesh will begin to desire more. One of the easiest ways you can, one of the indices to decode that your spirit is dying is your flesh begin to rule. You begin to get frustrated more. Frust frustration kicking easily. Anger kicking easily. You get angry at little things. Every little thing aggravates you. You say things you shouldn't say. Death, 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 death. That means your spirit is dying. Your spirit is dying. Pay attention. Everything scares you. Depression is coming in. That means something is dying. Not all the time. Not all the time. Let me balance that. There are times your spirit can be grieved because of certain circumstances that happen to you. It's like someone sitting for a board exam and they failed. Such a person will feel pain. But there are also times whereby every little thing puts a person to depression. Every little thing, every little thing. Brethren, I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, the Bible says, and the angel gave him strength and they pray earnestly. I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, and empower me with fresh strength. Empower me with fresh strength, oh God. Lord, empower. Ah, oh my. please let someone do me a favor. Go to Luke 17. I don't want to lose this chapter. Go to Luke 17, verse 5. Can someone read that for me, please? In King James Version. Then we'll come back to this chapter 22. Luke 17, verse 5. I just want everybody to hear it from someone else. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. Anyone? I have it. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Thank you. Those were disciples telling Jesus, brethren, these people were walking with God, 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 who came in the flesh, asking, Base, have you ever, why would they ask such a question? Brethren, they have seen something. They saw some things that the Bible didn't explain to us. 
for them to say, Lord, increase our faith. Talk about you and I. Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, in your infinite mercy, in your infinite mercy, endow me with strength. Strength to go deeper. Strength to pray, oh God. Strength to come alive. Strength to be active in my walk of faith. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, endow me with strength, endow me with strength to go deeper, to go deeper, endow me with strength, Lord, endow me with strength, with strength, with strength, with strength, with strength to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper, endow me, Lord, with strength to go deeper, 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 endow me. Endow me, endow me, endow me with strength to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper. Endow me, O oh God, endow me, O oh God, with strength to go deeper, with strength to go deeper, with strength to go deeper. Endow me, Lord, 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 with strength to pray, strength to study, strength to fast, strength to fast. Strength to fast, strength to fast, strength to pray, strength to fast, strength to go deeper, strength to go deeper, strength to go deeper, strength to go deeper, and thou me with strength, 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 with strength. With strength, with strength, with strength, with strength, with strength, with strength, with strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse. Let's come back to Luke 22 now. Verse 47 says, And while he yet speak, Behold a multitude, he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, he said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest. Remember what I was saying before? He smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, So far ye thus far, and a touch is here, and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief, priest and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves when i was daily with you in the temple ye stretch forth no hands against me but this is what your hour and the power of what? Oh my God. This is what your, oh my God, brethren. Ah, you see, the same way we have summer, the same way we have winter, the same way we have spring, the same way we have different seasons in the journey of life. I don't know what season we are about to enter, but for the Holy Spirit to lead me to this place today, Look at what Jesus Christ said to them. He said, this is your hour. Your hour of what? Power of darkness. Another translation says, the hour of evil. <laughs> Brethren, when the disciples were sleeping, they had no idea that what Jesus Christ was praying for was he already saw it that they were already on their way. Brethren, can you see what is already on your way? Can you see what is ahead of you? Can you see what is coming in year 2024? Are you preparing yourself? 
Are you preparing? Apostle Sai said something. <laughs> he said, listen to what he said. I don't know how many of you that know Apostle Sai. He said, I will be very stupid. I will be very stupid if the enemy is planning for me and I'm not planning for the enemy. <laughs> oh my God. He said, I will be very stupid if the enemy is planning to bring me down and I'm not planning against the enemy. Brethren, what plan do you have against the enemy? What plans, what strategy do you have to protect yourself from the enemy? What strategy do you have to protect your soul? What strategy do you have to keep going in Christ? What strategy do you have? Do you only have academic strategy to keep rising in the corporate world and no spiritual strategy? Verse 54 now. Now, you see, even though Jesus prayed, one of the things I needed to say here is there are many times, even though you pray for the storm, the storm will still come. Even though you pray against the storm, God will give you victory over the storm, but the storm will still come. Jesus prayed, angel came, yet the battle still showed up. Jesus prayed, he prayed to the point his sweat was as thick as blood, yet the battle, the battle still came. They still arrested him. Brethren, I don't know what you are going through. You have fasted, you have prayed, you have sown seed. God doesn't mean that because solution has not come, it doesn't mean that God has not answered your prayer. It doesn't mean that God is deaf. It doesn't mean that you are a failure. It doesn't even mean that you are a sinner. Because there are many times when you pray to a point and there's no result, you begin to think it's a sin. It's because of your sin. That's why God has not changed my story. I've been there. I've been there. Sometimes it happens once in a while. I'm telling you, I'm being honest now. Sometimes you be like, God, are you still holding my past things before me? Could it be that this delay is as a result of the life I live in the past? Is this the consequence of my delay? Let's read further, verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Can you see that? Peter did what? If brethren, once your faith begin to fail, you know how you how you know when church people begin to backslide. They begin to if they used to sit in front in church, they begin to sit in back. They begin to follow afar off. When everybody's going on evangelism, they will tell you, "I'm so sorry, they have something to do today." They begin to follow from distance. Afar off means they will begin to distance themselves, God. They will begin to distance themselves from the place of fellowship. They will begin to distance themselves from the place of prayer. The same Peter, in this same chapter, in this same chapter, we read it at the beginning of this ministration. Peter said, I will die for you. I will go to prison with you. The same Peter, what happened? Because you know why? When he was supposed to pray to keep his faith, he was sleeping. He was sleeping. Brethren, please, I beg you, do everything to protect your faith. Don't allow the enemy take you afar off. Do everything to sustain your faith. Verse 55, and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the ball, and we sat, we sat down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Verse 59. And about the space of one hour, 
after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet speak, the cock trail, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. The Lord turned. Ah, oh my God. 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 The Lord turned. He turned. He turned. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Lord help me. He turned. Brethren, the day he needed Peter the most. The day he needed Peter the most, Peter denied. The Lord turned. He turned and he looked at him as he invested three years in you. Ah, Peter, I prayed for you. Yet you denied me. The Lord turned. Brethren, may the Lord not turn the day he needed you the most. The Lord turned. He turned and he looked at him. I prayed for this guy. I prayed for him. Yet the day he was supposed to be praying, he was sleeping. I prayed for him. The Lord turned and he looked at him. Lord, don't, oh my God, <laughs> my God, my God. <laughs> oh my God, but then I want us to pray. The reason why I'm crying is because it's in the prayer we're about to pray. Lord, may I not become a disappointment in the day you need me the most. May I, may ever not look at me. The Bible says, God told Isaiah, who shall we send? Meaning they look at the old jurisdiction. They look at that location. They couldn't find a man who has a stature that they can send. Brethren, when the Lord look at your church, when the Lord look at your family, and there's a problem in that family. Can he trust you? Can he send you? Can the Lord turn and look at you and say, ah, yes, we can send this person. Can he trust you? I want us to pray. I want us to tell the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me, O oh God. Despite he prayed for him, he denied. The prophecy came to pass. He denied. Lord, Help me. Don't let me become a disappointment. Do you know how many people? Go and read the book of Luke chapter 10. This, way, this was a man that went on evangelism. Two, two. They came back telling Jesus, the lame walk. The dead came back to life. Many things happened. And Jesus Christ told them, I saw Satan dropped. Brethren, imagine the same person that did many miracles, that God used him to do many things, that's a man denied Jesus. It's like Elijah. Elijah who told God. Elijah who did many things. You see, many times when I tell people who are very close to me, when you see me cry in church every time, it's because of stories like this. Peter did many things before the things we saw in the book of Acts. Yet he denied. Elijah did many things for God. Elijah almost wanted to commit suicide, telling God, God, kill me. Kill me. I'm, I'm not interested again. Kill me. They are after my life. A man, a man who did tremendous things with God. Denied God. I want us to tell the Lord, Lord, help me. Help this heart, oh God. Help me. Not to become a disappointment. 
Many people have seen me in the church. Many people have seen my post on Instagram. Many people know me as a Christian. Lord, don't let me bring you shame. Don't let my life disgrace you. Don't let my life become a public shame. Don't let my life be put... Lord, don't even let me become a secret shame. Some people in the secret, they are bringing shame. They are not bringing public shame like Peter. Their own shame is in the secret. Masturbating in the secret. Pornography in the secret. Fornication in the secret. Lord, endow me, O God. Help me. Don't let me disgrace you. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Prayer, 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 prayer. My Lord and my God. Endow me, O God. Help me, O God. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Lord, help me, O God. Don't let my life become a disappointment. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Help me, O God. Help me, O God. Help me, O God. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Help me, Lord. Don't let my life become a disappointment. Become a disappointment. Become a disappointment. Help me, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic tonight says building the necessity of faith for the end time journey. The necessity of faith for the end time journey. Brethren, how do we obtain a great faith? How do we obtain this faith? Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Um, babe, you can just help me put um, Luke 22 from verse 31 to... Where did I stop now? to 61, from verse 31 to 61. Thank you. I want us to go to Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 11, the book of Hebrew. Hebrews, book of Hebrews chapter 11, from verse, I'm going to read from verse 2 to 10. Then I'm going to read from verse 13 to 16, then 32 to 35, Luke chapter 11, 2 to 10, Luke chapter 11, 13 to 16, Luke chapter 11, 32 to 35. I read. For it is, for by it, let me start from verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death and was not found, because God translated him. For before without faith, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He had this testimony that what he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. You see, let me read verse 5 again. 
by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. They now explain further. Verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, oh my God, diligently seeking. Brethren, a man who seeks God casually will receive casual reward. Have you seen a student who read casually? He will fail casually. A student who read casually, we also see the consequences. God reward those who diligently means hard work, hard work, hard work. Faith is hard work, brethren. Faith is hard work. If you read from verse 2, talking about everything, he said the optas, the elders, they obtain reward. They obtain report through faith. Everything they did in the Old Testament, their, 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 their life of faith was being affirmed. It was confirmed. The elders, they obtained reward. Brethren, please, I encourage you. Verse 3 says, he said, true faith, everything, your word, the word you desire, W-O-R-L-D, the word you desire will be created by the word of your faith. The word of faith. The word of faith. The word you desire, the kind of life you desire, will be created because even the word we live, this word was created through the word of faith. They came from what doesn't exist into physical existence. Let there be light appeared. Let there be day. Brethren, what you want to see in the future will be determined by what you are saying today. Verse 5 says, Enoch, a man broke protocol. A man broke protocol. He broke protocol. He put death to shame. A man went with this body, this same body, to heaven like Jesus. True faith. True faith. Brethren, we are in a season, a dispensation, where you need to keep your faith alive. Please do everything to keep your faith alive. Verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, being one of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. A man of faith brought a man of faith brought preservation to a generation. A man of faith brought he, he preserved his own generation through faith. Brethren, Please don't allow your faith fail. If your faith fail, it will affect a generation. Let me repeat that again. If your faith fails, it will affect a lot of people in your generation. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs within of the same promise. Brethren, faith will place a demand. Faith will place a demand. 
Faith will place a demand for you to go on a journey. Faith will place a demand on you to go on a journey. Brethren, nobody, nobody walks with God without faith. Please, I beg you. I encourage you. I'm encouraging you. Please stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. You, the Bible says we cannot please God except through faith. Faith is not just a word. Faith is active. It's an action word. Faith is active. You have to, you, you can't tell me you believe without action. He says, show me your faith and I will show you my work. Faith without work is what? Spirit. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. In this journey, and let me, let me, let me, let me surprise you. Do you know that if you refuse to grow your faith, it will limit many things in your journey in life. If you refuse to grow, because growing in faith is intentional, it's not something that happens automatically. It will never happen by magic. You must take action. You must take daily action to grow your faith. The same way you take daily action to eat, even if I go to Chick-fil-A to get your food, you must take a deliberate, intentional decision to put that food in your mouth. Brethren, please, I'm begging you, grow your faith. Grow your faith. Don't allow your faith to remain at that baby level. It is time for you to rise in faith. So that, you see, the reason why I'm telling you this is because God if your faith doesn't rise, there are many things God will not share with you. Let me use a good example. We have two kids, a six years old and a five years old. Now, there are some things I can't trust my kids to go bring for me. If I have hot water, in a jug, in the kitchen. I can't tell my kids to go bring an hot jug and bring it for me in the living room. You know why? I can't trust them. I don't have faith in them that they have the wisdom and the maturity on how to handle that situation. The same way when God look at you, before God will commit something big into your hands, he looks straight into your heart. You are asking God, God, give me a husband. God, give me a good guy. God, give me a responsible man. And God is saying, my daughter, can you please grow your faith? Because if I bring this good guy, your desire, your desire, you have not grown to a level where you can undo a good man yet. You won't be able to undo him because the level you are now, your faith has not grown. Brethren, the same thing happens to a man. You are asking God to bring the right partner. The same thing happens. The man must grow in maturity. There are many men, many men, men, but they are baby, baby men. I'm sorry to say that. They are baby men. Men is not by age. Woman is not by age. Baby, they are men. But they act like baby. No sense of maturity. No sense of responsibility. No. No. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. Don't limit your journey with God because you refuse to grow your faith. Verse 10 says, For he looked for a city which had no foundation, whose builder and maker is God. <laughs> Brethren, there is a level in this journey of faith, in this journey of faith, that you must, you journey, you will journey from a level of God, give me, God, give me. You get to a point where you don't need, you are not asking for God for money. 
for material things, for mundane things. Now you are asking, God, I look up to you. When I first gave my life to Christ, for the first six months, I'm always, I will lock up myself. I'm always crying, looking forward to rapture. Always crying. All I just want is I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. And I've had stories of many people that had the same thing. Brethren, there is a level you get to. That was the level this man got to. They got to a level in their work with God. They began, they journey, they journey in faith to a level. They were looking up to another, another location whose foundation is God. Let's read verse 13 to 16. Verse 13 to 16, see, in the same chapter, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They seek a country. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. <laughs> brethren, do you know what the Lord is saying? If they were conscious of, oh my God, brethren, please, don't, especially for many of us that migrated from Africa to this nation, don't allow the glamour of Las Vegas, don't allow the glamour of this nation, don't allow the wide life, wide living of this nation to make you lose your heavenly focus. Many people have lost heavenly focus. They have lost their focus of heaven because of worldly enjoyment. Worldly enjoyment. These men, they, let me read verse 15 again. He said, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now, verse 16, they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. A city. Brethren, these people, they saw the promises Yet they believed, and yet those promises never came. We used to believe God, even when the things God told you never came. Me personally, me personally, to be very vulnerable and be honest with you, I have questioned God on many things He told me that I've not received. I said it on this platform months ago. There were some things God showed me 15 years ago. 15 years, it has not happened yet. There are some prayers I've been praying for the past five years. I've spoken to Fervin. I've spoken to a couple of people who have closed out to me, to Jade. Yet, those things, I'm still waiting for those prayers till now. And yet, I saw those things in the dream. He even showed me the month. And yet, I've not seen it yet. Will you still believe God? Even though you prayed, God, give me a husband. Give me, give me, give me a life partner. Give me a, 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 a godly lady. And yet, it's not forthcoming. Will you still believe God? Will you still call God that God is true? Even when everything around you doesn't look like God is good. Even when you cannot pay your rent. Even when things look terrible. Is God still good to you? Can you still say the Lord is good even though you have not eaten? Brethren, these things I'm saying, it's not easy. I'm telling you, that's what I'm telling you. You must build your faith through prayer, through prayer, through the word of God. Verse 32 now to 35, the same chapter, 
verse 32. Let's move forward. Verse 32 to 35. Verse 32 says, And what shall I must say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdue kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness we are made strong waxed valiant in fight turned to flight the armies of the aliens and you see what faith can do brethren by the time you get to a certain time if they are counting people in your city where you live and heaven is counting the people of faith you see these people they are counting here they already died years ago they themselves didn't even know their name was going into a record they themselves didn't know that by the way they were living, they were building a record for another generation. Oh my God. They were, their life was a pattern. Not that generation. You see, today, we can talk about Martin Luther King because he made a choice to build a record. Brethren, my question to you, the Lord has sent you to that family are you willing to make a choice to build a record for that family? Or all you just want to do is to make a choice that pleases you and you alone? No, you can't keep living like that. Christianity is not a journey of comfortability. It's not a, Christianity is a life of sacrifice. If you see a student that wants to live in a comfort zone, that student has written a letter to failure, even before graduation. Any student that wants to live a life of comfort can never, never pass any exam. Never. It's not a course. You see, there are some things a man of God says. I believe it was late Miles Monroe. We can know the consequences of how your life will end if we see the decision you are making. You don't need to make the decision of how the consequences will end. Once, once you make the decision, any decision you make, we already know how the consequences will be. Imagine a person telling you, oh, I will jump from three-story building. I will jump from five-story building. That decision already told us that your brain, your, your brain your body, everything will scatter to pieces. The, we already know the consequences. A person who is going to church, they are not studying the Bible. They don't read the Bible every day. Holy Spirit is telling them, open the book. You told the Holy Spirit, you are tired. Holy Spirit, relax. Okay, I understand you are tired. When you woke up, you are about to watch Netflix. Holy Spirit came to knock on your door again. Open your heart. Read the book. Let's study. Let us fellowship. Holy Spirit, let me finish this Bible. I need to go to shop, right? I need to do this. You are making a decision. Jesus told Peter in the book of Luke 22, he said, pray, pray, pray. They were sleeping. Peter didn't know that what Jesus told him was about to happen. He was sleeping. Brethren, we have just two months before this year is over. I beg you, don't sleep within these two months. When I mean don't sleep, I'm not telling you not to go to bed every night. I'm telling you, prepare for the years coming. Don't go and prepare on December 31st and go and pray prayer and say you are praying a crossover prayer. No, prepare. Prepare. Prepare yourself through prayer. Prepare through knowledge. Prepare. Be strategic. What are the things that you need to remove? What are the decisions you need to make this year? 
Begin to. Holy Spirit told me something last year. Every year, before you enter every year, prepare three months before the year. Three months. Always prepare yourself quarterly. Three months, always three months ahead. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. Prepare. Whatever you need to shed off, shed it off. Whatever you need to give up, give it up. Whatever new habits you need to pick up, ask the Lord for grace. Lord, engrace me. Engrace me. Engrace me. I said something at the, at the Garden of Eagles. You are not weak. You are not weak. It's because you have not prayed. It's because you have not prayed. The same Peter, Peter would deny Jesus. He ah, go and read the book of Acts chapter 4. They arrested Peter. He <laughs> looked at the face of the priest, the high priest. He said, how do we deny what our eyes have seen, what our ears have, because why? The Holy Ghost has, the Holy Ghost sat upon him. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, the fire came upon him, a tongue of fire. He sat upon their head and Peter became another man. Another man that was willing to die now because something has come upon him. Brethren, please, before you enter your next season, let something sit upon you. While you are waiting for God, why don't you prepare yourself? Equip yourself to knowledge. Build strength, build capacity. Build capacity. You are not weak. I'm telling you, I'm not telling you you won't have your moments. There will be moments where, you've, where you, will, you will be weak. Your soul will be weak. You know what you do? Go to the crib. If you have to crawl, crawl to the place of worship. Go on your phone. Look for your best worship. Don't play R and B. R and B will not resolve it. You need a spiritual solid song from the throne of grace. There are days when my spirit is weak. I can, I can sometimes I'll be in the gym. I can listen to worship for two hours until my spirit come alive. Sometimes if I feel like the worship is not working, I look for a faith message. I have different mentors. I have a mentor that this ministry is built on faith, which is faith, faith ministry, Dr. Yedeko. I have a mentor whose ministry is built on prayer. I have a mentor that smiles tomorrow when it's come to mental development and wisdom. You must have, you must be very, very intelligent. I have specific people that I listen to based on my current need. Please, I'm begging you. We just saw here the things faith did in the life of this man. Brethren, will your children look at you and they see the faith of the Bible? When you marry, when you begin to raise kids, will your children be able to see the faith of the Bible? A night before the last Garden of the Eagle, I was preparing for the Garden of the Eagles and the Holy Spirit said, my son, my son, make sure you don't disappoint me. Don't allow these children I have given to you. Don't let them grow up to see a fake man. Because those children will get to a point, they will begin to read the Bible themselves. And when they see the testimonies, go and read the New Testament. This is the New Testament. They were talking, Peter, all of them, they were talking about the faith of the fathers. Our father said, our father said, brethren, today, even till now, people are still talking about Martin Luther King. The question is, do you know that as you rise up, as you grow, your life is supposed to be the legacy for your family and your generation? Your life, my life, is supposed to build a legacy for your family and for your generation. Your family is supposed to look at you and say, ah, God, thank you for raising this man in this family. Living to stand out. Living to stand out. Brethren, look at verse 39. Verse 39. Verse 39. Verse 39 says, Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39 to 40. He said, And these all, having obtained a good report, through faith, receive not the promise, 
having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Let's quickly, before we begin to pray, let's quickly look at the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. 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 Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Ye not being slothful, brethren, one of the ways we obtain this faith we must look at the faith of the fathers. Not being slow. Not being slothful. Not being a weak vessel. But to look at the life of the fathers of faith. Being a follower. He said, look at it. He said, and ye not being slothful. But followers of them. Can someone help me look for this verse? And being surrounded by so many high witnesses. Let me see. If you can help me find that verse. And we've been surrounded by many high witnesses. Is it Hebrews 12, 1? Let me check it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. He says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so a great cloud, with so a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run, run with patience the race that is said before us. Brethren, you and I, we are surrounded by many witnesses. Not just witnesses you see in your family, on your job. There are witnesses in heaven who are looking at us. Joseph is looking down on us. David is looking down from heaven. They are looking down. Brethren, how do you think these people in heaven will feel? They didn't have 66 books. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, including Daniel, they didn't have no New Testament, yet believed to the end. Yet, me and you, we have 66 books. Brethren, there is a race that has been set before you and I. There is a race that has been set before us. Let's quickly open. Second Corinthians five seven. Second Corinthians five seven. Can someone help me type in the chat, please? The Bible verses. Anyone? Second Corinthians five seven. Second Corinthians five seven. I think the first one I called before was um. Hebrews six twelve. Hebrews six twelve. Then um. Hebrews 12, 1, then 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, I read. It says, for we walk by faith. Thank you. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Brethren, it's a daily walk. It's a daily, a daily walk. Thank you. It's a daily walk. It's a daily, meaning every day, you and I must pick up our faith. You must pick up, you must make a decision to make 
active decision of faith. Active means you will take active decision in action to make God happy every day. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Let's look at the book of Romans 10, 17. 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 Before we begin to pray. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 says, So, so then faith comment by what? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So faith comment by hearing. And hearing again by the word of God. Brethren, faith doesn't come automatically. You have to build your faith. Make a decision. There was, oh, I don't want to use the word unfortunate. Fortunately, many people joined us towards the end. Please, I'm begging you. Make a decision. Make a decision. Let me quickly go back to where I read before at the beginning, which was Luke, the book of Luke chapter 22. I just want to show because of people who join late. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read from verse 35. Luke 22 from verse 35. I'm going to read to 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without pause and script and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that had a pause, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that had no sword, let him sell his garment. Let him sell his garment and buy one. This was the same Jesus that told Peter when he cut off in this same chapter. When Peter cut off one of the servant's ears, he told him to put the sword away. But now Jesus is telling them, go and sell your garment to buy sword. Follow me. Verse 37. For I, I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And it was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. It is enough. He said, and he said unto them, Ye are two sword, and he said, and he said unto them, It is enough. Brethren, while I was preparing for this ministration tonight, the thing the Holy Spirit was putting in my spirit is the sword representing the word of God is not enough. It's not enough. The verse says, it is enough. But what is telling them? He said, go and sell your garment to buy sword. Meaning the word of the Lord you have inside of you is not enough. You need to sell everything. When I mean sell, I'm not talking about physical selling. Meaning give up many things to acquire more word in your spirit. If you read Isaiah 55, let me take you to Isaiah 55, real quick. Isaiah 55 from verse 1. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says, Oh, everyone that tested, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat ye. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hacking diligently unto me, 
Eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Brethren, please, I'm begging you, make up time. Make up time. I don't know what season we are about to get into. Make up, store up. The book of Psalm 109 says, your word have I stored in my heart. I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Brethren, please prepare, prepare, prepare. Load up your heart. The angel told Elijah in 1 Kings 19, he said, eat for the journey is far. Brethren, my journey, your journey is far. Eat more. Gain capacity. Your food is the word of God. I said on Tuesday, I watched a man of God from Nigeria two weeks ago. And he said, sometimes before you preach on Sunday, he read 80 chapters. And when you see the way he preaches, he preaches very solemn, very, very calm. And you see miracles, miracles. This is a young man, maybe in his 50s. And you see miracles. He says sometimes he read, he said the highest he has read is 120 chapters before he ministers. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. He said, be not slothful. Follow the faith. Follow the faith of those who obtain reward. Brethren, go and study the Bible. As a woman, go and read the story of Deborah. Read the story of Esther. As a man, look at the story of David. Shadrach, Daniel. Brethren, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining tonight. I pray your faith will not fail you. I have an announcement for us. So based on my schedule right now and the things I needed to, the things I have to do, from next month, from next month, our meetings is going to be once a week. I sincerely apologize, you know, I sincerely apologize, but I have so much on my plate, so much, you know, and as everyone knows, I'm a father, I'm accountable to my family, you know, I also have an assignment which is the things God want me to do. And I also have a professional life too that I'm also trying to achieve with my life. I have many commitments. I have many commitments. So moving forward from next, what date? Can someone tell me what is the date for next week? Next Thursday. November 2nd. Okay, November 2nd. Next Thursday, right? Yes. Thank you, Thank you Sister Titi. So next Thursday, we will we'll be meeting now Thursdays from nine, from um, nine to eleven. We will no longer meet on Tuesdays anymore. Please, I I sincerely apologize. Just keep me in prayers. Pray for me. It's a lot of responsibility on my shoulder, you know. And just keep me in prayers. Keep me in prayer. It's a lot. And that's why a lot of times I reach out to you guys who is willing to minister, who is willing to minister. You know, we have to learn from each other. So from next, moving forward, please let me pass this information to your families, your friends, those you have invited. I'm going to put it on the, on the platform as well. We'll be meeting moving forward once a week. Once a week. So that my life is not grounded. So that I'm not stranded. You know, in life, you have to be smart. You have to be very strategic. So please, I encourage everyone, please bear with me. This is not being intentional, but you know, I have to I have to be very sincere. I have to be very sincere. So before we end tonight's um prayer call, um, for those who are part of um or you want to wait to join us in praying for the Garden of the Eagles, please I encourage you, invite your friends. We're gonna be meeting once, like you know, the Garden of the Eagles is coming up again. November 11th, November 11th. It's going to be an intense moment of worship and prayer. We're going to be standing in gap to pray for our families, breaking negative patterns, cycles, negative cycles, praying for more strength, praying into 2024. We don't have to pray to wait for December before we begin to pray for 2024. We need to begin to pray now. We pray for strength, you know, and for stamina. So please 
You can bring anybody, anybody, children, kids, everybody's invited. So um, I'm inviting you. The flyer is going to be out by God's grace next week. You know, so um, brethren, if you're interested, you want to join us in praying, the prayer is going to start right after this program. You can join us. You can stay. You are allowed, you know. Um, if not, you're also allowed to hang up when I share the grace. And lastly, I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, help my faith. Help my faith. Help me. Help me. Don't let me sleep. Jesus told Peter, rise up and pray. He asked him, Peter, why are you sleeping? When Peter was supposed to be praying, Peter was sleeping. That Lord, help my faith. Don't let me go to sleep when I'm supposed to be active. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Lord, help my faith, O oh God. Help my faith, O oh God. Help my faith, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Don't let me go to sleep when I'm supposed to be active. Help my faith, Lord. Help my faith, Lord. Help my faith, Lord. Don't let me be sleeping when I'm supposed to be active. Don't let me be sleeping when I'm supposed to be active. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for how far you have brought us tonight. Father, let me may not be exalted. I soak everyone with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I decree an awakening in our spirit. An awakening, an awakening. I decree strength to pray, strength to fast, strength to live for God. Strength to stay in your presence. Lord, let that strength be released. I decree testimonies. The Bible says I have opened a door that no man can shut. I decree let the doors you are knocking, doors of life partner, doors of miracle jobs, doors of testimonies. I decree let those doors begin to open now in the name of Jesus. I decree let those doors open now. I decree let your eyes of understanding be open. I decree direction. Direction, direction, direction. Father, let your name alone be exalted. I cover your children with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. For those who are supposed to be in prayer, you can stay behind. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, everyone.